Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. Welcome back to another episode. This one, I want to talk about how to become a full stack developer. So we're going to talk about what that is and then what you can do in order to become one. Sort of my recommendations in terms of your career path, how to methodically build towards becoming a full stack developer. Now, one thing I want to address before we get into this is what you might see out there is people talking about, quote unquote, the myth of the full stack develop developer. And the idea is, is that, you know, sort of nobody is really truly a full stack developer that knows everything about both the, the client side and the server side and the back end and the front end and so forth. And I actually sort of generally agree with that, although I don't think it's a myth. One of the things that I've always talked about is I think that most full stack developers, the ones that I know and so forth, tend to have a focus or a specialty. So they tend to be, you know, a little bit better at the front end or tend to work more uh, with the front end and, and specialize in that. Or they tend to uh, specialize and work more with the back end, but they know both. And to me, that's really when I think of a full stack developer, I'm not thinking of someone who just knows absolutely everything about both the front and the back end. Uh, I'm thinking about someone who's very familiar with both, can work in both, but tends to have a specialty or in a particular job, they happen to be working in in one heavily. So I just want to address that in case uh, you've heard that about the myth of the full stack developer. It's It's a little bit different than how I see that. So with that said, let's get into this and talk about what is a full stack developer. And I, I like this definition from Daniel Borowski. He wrote, I, I saw this over on Medium, wrote a blog post about it. And his definition was a full stack web developer is someone who is able to work on both the front end and back end portions of an application. Front end generally refers to the portion of an application the user will see or interact with. And the back end is the part of the application that handles the logic, database interaction, user authentication, server configuration, etc. And one of the things that you'll probably often hear when people talk about this is the client side or server side. And so you tend to have client side languages and client side development, and then you have server side development. One of the shortcuts that I make with uh, web development, just in my own thinking, is I tend to think of the the front end as the browser I, instead of using the word client, because client's just such a weird word. Um, I tend to think of it as a browser. It's not a hundred percent accurate just because a client could be, doesn't have to be a web browser. It could be an FTP client or, or, or a number of different things. But as web developers, we tend to work with primarily and be focused on the browser. And so basically languages that, that the, the browser interprets are going to be front end languages and languages that the server interprets those are going to be backend languages as a sort of really general uh, rule of thumb. So again, when I think of front end, I think of browser. When I think of back end, I think of server. So a full stack of developer is essentially someone who can do both. They're familiar with all those languages. They're familiar with working on the front end and the back end and so forth. And they're able to go uh, and operate in, in both realms. All right. So with that said, then let's talk about front end development. So front end development, also known as client side development, is the practice of producing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for a website or web application so the user can see and interact with them directly. So again, as I mentioned, it's sort of dealing with the browser. And here there's not, what's nice about the front end is there's not really a ton of bait, debate, right? When you get into the back end, you'll, you'll get debate about languages and you know what the different technologies and so forth. But for the front end, it's pretty much established. Right. You need H2, you need to know HTML and CSS and, and JavaScript. Now, there are some different fr frameworks for JavaScript, and you don't necessarily have to use JavaScript uh, in a website, but HTML and CSS are pretty much required uh, for anything beyond just a purely text-based site, for anything that you would do in any sort of career for sure. Uh, and JavaScript is really just sort of right up there. So understanding what to learn in terms of the front end is really, really easy, and it, it, it's simple because this is the stuff you just bit have to learn first. Even if you want to be a backend developer, you don't even want to be a full stack developer. You still need to know HTML and CSS and really JavaScript because a lot of the code that you're going to output to from the backend is going to be these languages. And so you have to be familiar with them. So whatever kind of developer you want to be, where you start is with HTML and CSS and and really JavaScript. Although I will say in my career, I did HTML, CSS, and then I skipped to the back end and then came back 
uh, to JavaScript, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would recommend learning the front end uh, pretty in depth before going to the back end. So you want to learn front end web development first. You really kind of need to learn front end devel web development first in order to be a f uh, full stack web developer. So it's pretty easy to figure out in that regard. Now, my recommendation in terms of learning this stuff may be a little bit different than, than some people, but obviously you want to learn HTML, CSS, and sort of uh, pure JavaScript. But then there's a lot of frameworks out there for JavaScript. And I think most people would probably you know talk, tell you to get into React and some of the other ones that are out there. I actually recommend still learning jQuery. And the reason why is there's a lot of code out there that's still written in jQuery, so you're probably going to encounter it. So knowing it is a good thing. I still think jQuery is a decent library for sort of utility uh, JavaScript work, and it eases a lot of the, the the things that you have to do in JavaScript that when you use jQuery, you just simply don't have to do those things. You know, React obviously is going to do some of those same things uh, as well, but I just think jQuery can be a really good introduction into JavaScript to start sort of getting your head around it, and then you can dive deeper into you know, pure JavaScript, React, you know, Angular, if you want to go all the way and go into Node and some of the other stuff, then you can do that. But um, my recommendation is to learn a little jQuery along the way because you're going to run into it and it can be pretty useful in certain situations. All right, so that's front-end web development in terms of, of what to learn and how to go about that. And then when we look at back-end development, so back-end web development is usually consists of three parts, a server, an application, and a database. And code written by backend developers is what communicates the database information to the browser. Anything you can't see easily with the eye, such as databases and servers, is the work of a backend developer that comes from course report. So essentially, the 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 technology, the software, the languages that are going to be operating on the server side of things. And just real quickly, the way way this sort of works is, you know, when you visit a web page. You know, there's DNS servers. There's a lot that goes on here, but essentially, your your client is going to make your browser is going to make a request of the server, and the server is going to do any sort of processing of the backend languages like PHP or Python or any of those things. It's going to do those things before it ever sends anything back to the client, uh, the browser in this case. So the languages that you write on the back end are processed by the server and then the output of that is sent over to the browser and that's going to be in the form of html css and javascript so that's why i say that even if you're a back end web developer ultimately everything is outputting to some sort of front end language so you still have to be familiar with them so then when it gets back to the browser then the browser actually is what interprets the html the css the javascript so uh that that's sort of what a back-end web developer is in terms of my recommendation i'm actually not going to recommend any languages to you and we'll i'll get to why here in just a second which is the next thing we're going to talk about that i don't think a ton of people really talk about but i'm not going to make any recommendations in terms of, of what languages you sh should learn or whatever. There's something else you consider to should consider to make that decision. However, what I will tell you is that I think in terms of the process of learning any language, almost every language is going to have some sort of you know, frameworks or major framework, like Python has Django and, and so forth. So there's usually going to be some sort of framework um, and there's usually going to be some sort of kind of dominant application. So to give you a very clear example of this, you know, if you take the PHP language, Laravel is a very dominant framework in in that space, and WordPress is one of the most popular uh, PHP applications, maybe the most popular PHP application uh, that's out there. So you're going to tend to find that you're going to find languages, frameworks, and applications. And I recommend that you learn the language then a framework, then the application uh, in order to have a really well-rounded understanding of a particular language and its entire sort of economy or community or space and be able to work in uh, a lot of different diverse environments. Because I'll just take again, being a PHP developer myself, you know, I run into a lot of projects. There's a lot of projects out there, a lot of jobs that I could get that they want you to know Laravel or they want you to know WordPress. Whether you th like those things or not, you know, career-wise, those things are going to be there. So 
uh, you'll want to definitely learn uh, those things. So that would be my recommendation in terms of back-end web development. All right, so I said I'm not going to tell you a language to learn because of what's coming next, and that is, and I've sort of been harping on this here lately, but I just, I still kind of get comments from people where they their their first thought is, well, I need to pick a language first, and I think that that has it backwards because for most people, when you're first getting into coding, you don't know anything about languages, and and that's a hard decision for you to make because you just don't know enough about it. And if you really think about it, it's often not the thing that you really care about. Most developers, I would say, tend to fall in love with, you know, the first or second language uh, that they learn. So I think picking the language is sort of the wrong way to picking it first is the wrong way to go about this. I think you need to pick your career path first or think about your career path first, because that's eaten, uh, something you're more familiar with and often is something that's more important to you. And certain career paths lend themselves to certain technology stacks. So, for example, PHP, MySQL, WordPress, these are all bigger in the freelancing space. So if you think about it and you decide, I want to be a freelancer, then you're probably going to want to learn WordPress and PHP and MySQL because there's going to be a lot of work available in that space. However, Python, Java, Node, Go, some of these others, they're often bigger in startup companies or bigger tech companies. So if that's the route that you're wanting to go, then you will probably want to learn one of these languages. So think about your career path first. And the three I break it down into is freelancing, sort of a, a tech job, and then what I call an inventor, which is, you know, you're the Mark Zuckerberg that's going to create the next Facebook. Or you're going to create some new app or whatever. And when you go that route, you kind of get a you kind of get a pick what you, you want to use. Uh, depending on the space, if you're going to get into phone apps, then you're sort of limited in that sense. But if you're creating some sort of web app, you kind of get a pick uh, what you think you're going to like and so forth. But when it comes to freelancing and tech jobs and startups and so forth, those tend to dictate a little bit more what language. So once you know your career path, now have you much clearer understanding of uh, what language you, you should learn. Now, what, one of my recommendations here is that especially if you're not sure, but even if you think you are, I would recommend doing some freelancing. And the reason I recommend that is because of the next thing I'm going to talk about, which is soft skills, but you just learn a ton uh, about the business of web development, which is uh, ultimately what we do as developers, whether you like business or sales or any of that stuff or corporations or whatever, whether you like it or not, a lot of the work that you're going to be doing is is business related. It's for a business, it has some sort of business purpose to it. And when you freelance, you really get a firsthand experience of that. And you really get to understand what, how business owners think, um, and how clients, you know, what their, their dreams are and their fears are and, and their expectations are and all these different things that are going to help you a ton. Even if later you decide you want to go into a, a technology to career, uh, as a go into a tech job, or you want to build some sort of app or whatever, you're just going to learn a lot about people by freelancing first, in particular, the kind of people that you're going to be working for, regardless of what route you go, which is the end users that you're going to be dealing with. So I recommend freelancing first, and then who knows, you may end up liking it and, and sticking with it. Now, one of the things I want to say here, since we're talking about sort of languages and, and so forth, if you're looking for a way to go and learn all of these languages, I have my uh, all my curriculum over on Skillshare that you can get no cost access to. So it's going to teach you front end development like HTML and CSS and some JavaScript. There's also very heavy in uh, back end development. If you're into PHP, there's several courses on PHP, my beginner's guide to PHP, an object learning programming course in PHP, several project based courses. I also have some front end project based courses. Uh, that are going to teach you sort of web design and putting all of this stuff together and teach you things like CSS grid and, you know, Ajax forms and, and so forth. So uh, if you're looking for a place to sort of learn all this stuff, and you don't want to pay an arm and a leg to do that. Again, my entire curriculum uh, is over at over on Skillshare. You can learn more about that at johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare and how to get that no cost access to it. Again, that's johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare. All right, last thing then that I want to talk about here is soft skills. So this may seem like it's kind of you know, out of bounds for talking about becoming a full stack web developer, but actually 
you know, it's one thing to learn the technology and we tend to be focused on that part of it, but actually getting hired or, or being able to freelance or being able to do this has a lot to do with soft skills. So actually becoming any kind of developer is about more than technology. Things like how to sell yourself and whether that's as a freelancer or in an interview or in a resume, you know, overcoming procrastination. I find that's one of the biggest things that that developers of, of all skill levels deal with is procrastination. You know, developing discipline, learning how to communicate. We, you know, we tend to be in uh, developers tend to be people that can, uh, as I say, go into their cave when they're working on something. But if you're working with clients or even a boss or whatever, that can be something that's just unacceptable. So learning how to communicate, even when you know you're really busy or you're stressed out or you're in the middle of trying to figure something out, learning how to do that, persistence, responsibilities. All these skills will be just as, if not more important than technical skills. So it's really important that while you're thinking about all the technology and so forth, you understand the importance of soft skills. And the thing that's really going to help you get to the the next levels beyond really just a junior developer is is your soft skills, right? Those are the things that start to separate uh, you out when you get to in, in it becoming an intermediate and senior level developer. Those are the things that, you know, companies are going to be looking for, clients are going to be looking for. So don't forget the soft skills and be trying to work on those things throughout and develop processes for these things. Again, this is why I recommend that everybody start off freelancing first, because when you freelance, you're on your own. If you make a mistake, really, you're the only one that sees it outside of your client. You know, you, you, see it very directly and firsthand, you know it, you can't hide from it, you can't get away with it, any of that stuff. You really put your feet to the fire in terms of soft skills when you freelance. And so you just, again, it's going to set you up uh, to be able to be a lot more successful down the road if you freelance first. So take that for what it's worth. So those are my thoughts on how to become a full stack web developer. Hopefully that uh, gives you some insight and and a way forward uh, if that's something that you want to do. Now, of course, if you did like the episode, I'd appreciate if you'd like uh, if you'd support the show. One of the ways you can do that is over on Patreon. Over there, the perks you get, you get access to all my official and unofficial courses, tutorials, source code, etc. So it's sort of my brain dump. Basically, a lot of stuff I've never released publicly before outside of Patreon. Everything that I have released officially, all that is over there. And you can learn more about that at johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. You can also get access to all my official courses. So these are all my polished, official released courses. You get access to those over on Skillshare. The benefit there is you get access to 21,000 plus other courses along with my courses. And you can get access to that for uh, for no cost when you go to johnmorrisonline.com slash Skillshare. That'll give you all the details on how to do that. And finally, if you want free samples of um, some of my courses, you can get them for nothing over at johnsfreetoots.com. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.